Okay, so to draw the polygon of forces, uh, we do need some angles here. So I have a protractor, and what we'll do is we'll measure uh, the angle from the downwards vector for each one of these uh, sections. So we'll just line up our protractor, and I get an angle going from the bottom across to this top section here um, of around, oh, let's line it up this way. Oops, sorry. So I measure from here 10 up to 90, so that's 100, 110. So it's close to 115 degrees. So this angle here, 115 degrees. So we can do the same going towards the left, or going um, clockwise. All right, so we've got 90, 110, 120, 126.5. And then that leaves the remaining angle over here. So um, that should approximately be, um, so 360 minus 115 minus 126.5. So this angle here should be 118.5. Um, we can verify that um, as well. Okay. Um, useful angles to know uh, would be um, if I was to draw a horizontal line um, across this section here, um, it would be to know what this angle here would be and what this angle here would be. Um, so simply um, we could just uh, draw a horizontal line. We could use a protractor to do that. Um, if this is 126.5 going all the way around, we can just go 126.5 minus 90. So this angle here is 36.5 and this angle here will be 115 minus 90, so 25 degrees. Okay, so we're going to use um, these three vectors um, so we have one force vector, which um, so force one, which has a magnitude of 3.08 newtons and an angle of 25 degrees. We have a second one, which is F2 equal to 3.06 newtons, and that's acting on an angle of um, well, if that's 36.5 degrees, um, we could say 180 minus 36.5, 143.5, and F3 is pointing straight down, so that's 2.55 newtons at an angle of 270. So what we'll do is we'll um, add these vectors head to tail and they should form a closed polygon of forces. Okay. So the for first vector was the one going down. Um, so we'll use F3 going down. And we'll use a scale, um, in, in our case, I'm going to use a scale of, let's say, um, one newton is equal to four centimeters. Uh, usually what we want to do is to try to make this take up as much space as possible. So actually, I'll change that to eight. Let's go eight centimeters. All right, so, um, no, maybe that's gonna be a little bit too big. Change it to four. Okay, so force three going down, that was 2.55 newtons. So um, 2.55 newtons, um, and we multiply it by four to get it in centimeters. So that's 10.2 down.
Okay. So this vector going down has a magnitude that corresponds to uh, 2.55 newtons. And that is force 3 that we had before. It's the first in our polygon of forces. Okay, um, so force number, well, well, this is force 3, let's do force 2. Um, force 2 had an angle of 143 degrees from this horizontal direction. So if I line this up over here with the 90 degrees, and um, so 100 and 43.5, so let's go here, so 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, so 143.5 is 1, 2, 3, around about here. Okay, so now what we can do is draw a line that starts from this position and goes towards that direction. How long does it need to be? Well, um, force 2 was 3.06 newtons. So we can multiply that by 4, this one here, and then we can use that to try to calculate the length, so 12.24. So we'll draw a line that matches up with 12.24 centimeters. Okay, so it's approximately there. And here is F2 with a force of 3.06 Newton. Okay, so at this point here we need to be able to draw a horizontal line. Um, now I happen to know that this angle here is 36.5, so we can try to measure 36.5 Sorry, the camera legs in the way to do this properly. Um, let's move the paper. Okay, so 36.5 is about here. Okay, so that's our horizontal. Okay, and so um, F, F1 had a force of 3.08 newtons. And um, 3.8 newtons, um, if we want to get it into centimeters according to this scale, we would multiply that by 4 centimeters because there's 4 centimeters uh, per newton in this case. Alright, so 3.08 times 4. 12.32 centimeters, and the angle we measured before was 25 degrees. Okay, so um, over here. I'll measure 25 degrees. And we'll measure a line which is at 12.32 centimeters long. Okay, so 12 point... three two centimeters long, there we go. Now, in theory, what we should see is that this system closes, um, that is that um, this vector finishes at this point here. Um, now, usually if we don't get this kind of uh, system closing to one point here, it means that one of our assumptions that we made at the beginning um, is untrue. Uh, so, for example, the mass of the, um, of the ring that we had, um, we assumed that that was negligible, um, maybe that is not as negligible as we assumed it was. Uh, the second thing is maybe we've assumed that the angles that we measured were uh, precise and that they were correct. 
Um, so as long as we had correct angles, um, then maybe that would be a correct measurement here. Um, there's a certain accuracy there, pl maybe plus or minus two degrees of accuracy on our angle measurement. Um, probably not good enough um, to get precise answers here. All right. Um, so unfortunately, what we see here is um, in our system there is a resultant force. If there really was a resultant force on our system, we should have seen the ring move in this direction here. We didn't see that, so um, I can only assume that this is because of experimental error. All right, uh, thank you for watching. Um, I hope this has been useful for you. Um, I should also add here, so F1 is equal to 3.08, Here's your angle of 25 degrees, and then over here, our angle of 143.5 degrees. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, hope this has been helpful for you, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.